Cyclone Jasper still alive whilst the Western Pacific shows potential on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for December 15th. We're code blue for Tropical Depression Jasper, which is still holding on as a distinct tropical cyclone over the Cape York Peninsula. It's halfway across and will enter the Gulf of Carpentaria in a day or so. Elsewhere, there are other areas of interest that we're going to be watching quite closely now because chances are increasing. Not in the Atlantic though, there's nothing here to look at at the moment, although there are non-tropical systems doing the rounds, there's one in the eastern Atlantic there, and a big one that's likely to form in the Gulf of Mexico in the next day or two, and swipe through the southeast of the United States. In the eastern Pacific, there's not much going on here either of course, as you'd expect, uh, but some moisture there bringing in some rainfall over parts of Mexico, and of course the deep tropics still having a few little thunderstorms down there on the intertropical convergence zone. In the western Pacific then, we have marked now 50% chance for Invest 91W, that western one that's headed towards the Philippines. We've also marked 30% for the eastern system we've been alluding to, near the Marshall Islands, very far east, near 170 degrees east, and a 10% chance still for the southwest Indian Ocean that we're still monitoring, although model support has fallen off a cliff for that one. But really want to mention that 50% heading towards the Philippines chances have increased massively on that one and we could still see that become a cyclone. There's Jasper, still a tropical depression with an estimated wind speed of 35 miles per hour and a pressure of 1,002 millibars, moving generally westwards slowly towards the Gulf of Carpentaria. And we're going to take a close look at it right now. Here it is in relation to uh, the local picture. It's 39 kilometers from Highbury, 41 from Gambula to the southeast, Marambi, 89 kilometers, uh, 172 kilometers from Kawanyama, and 293 from Karumba. A little bit further towards Carpentaria and Mornington Island, uh, but not too far away from those locations either. Certainly still producing substantial rainfall over the area which will continue for a few more days yet and we could still see a lot more rain. Satellite imagery looks like this and you can still see the cyclone quite clearly there. It's still fully filled out with a lot of cloudiness there, especially on the eastern side. Convective banding still present. A close-up visible imagery confirms that. It is though quite uh, light on the western side. You'll probably see the storm, um, it will probably approach quite suddenly because it is very dry on that western side. But the eastern side still all along that coastal area of course where we have Cairns and other populated centres still having lots and lots of rainfall and cloudiness in that region. No doubt, of course, the winds will be quite light at this point, but look at that radar imagery still dumping huge amounts of rain in the Cairns region north of there towards Port Douglas and on towards Cooktown. Now this is the Western Pacific, you can see that area of interest which is starting to look better, a big pulsating dome pushing off towards the northwest there of a um, residual or uh, beginning clouds there reaching the Philippines but the main part of the system is still far towards the southeast. This is locked on towards the center which is in itself southeast of all of that convection. You can see on that visible imagery possibly some rotation at the lower levels and maybe a circulation about to form or maybe is already formed and that would mean that we're on the verge of seeing a tropical depression out of this if that's true. Lots and lots of convection on that northern side which will be producing a lot of rainfall but not affecting very many land areas at the moment. So sea surface temperatures not much has changed in the eastern Pacific there's still a few hot spots the Atlantic the uh, loop current is even that is weakening now and the Gulf Stream off Florida temperatures really crashing in those areas Caribbean still holding on a little bit better Western Pacific still got quite a lot of warm spots there especially where that system is around 29 to 30 degrees Celsius all the way up to the Philippine Islands and then it cools between those islands and cooler still in the South China Sea eventually in the North Indian Ocean 
Bambing are looking decent for a few areas, but it's the Arabian Sea, the eastern part of it, looking better. We were looking at a possible system there a week or so ago that didn't quite materialize, but still very warm there. Southwest Indian Ocean piping hot in a few spots, especially off the western and northern coast of Madagascar, 29 degrees plus, and also along the eastern coast of Mozambique and near Mauritius, 27 to 28 degrees Celsius. Off the coast of Australia, extremely warm near Western Australia and the Northern Territory's top end and the Gulf of Carpentaria. Temperatures sky high into the 30s, cold sea catching up as well. South Pacific also getting warmer still, as you'd expect. Still 26 degrees, just about reaching uh, New Caledonia now and 28 degrees reaching Fiji quite a bit. Compared to average then, and that's what often counts, it is well above average in parts of the Western Pacific and the Southwest Indian Ocean. Western Australia very warm compared to normal, Eastern Australia is below mainly now because of Jasper. The eastern part of the Pacific still that El Nino effect which is very well manifested there. The far southeastern Pacific though has a large gulf of cool water. The Atlantic a little bit above average, although it is getting closer to normal now. Southern Pacific got a lot of oceanic heat content there, extending down towards Samoa, Fiji and Vanuatu and a few little spots there in the Coral Sea. Eastern Pacific hanging on to its tiny little piece there off the coast of Mexico and the Western Pacific is slowly depopulating in terms of its energy there, especially uh, in that little area east of Mindanao. So let's check it to see what the GFS has in store for us in the next five days. Short range, well there quickly you see the formation possibly of this cyclone in, near the uh, Philippines. It will look very disorganized all the way through by the looks of things, but it will push through the islands possibly with strong tropical storm force winds, so keep watching that one closely, we're up to 50%. Look east as well at that second system that forms there near the Marshall Islands and possibly affecting some of those atolls as it moves towards the northeastern crosses the international dateline eventually into the central pacific look towards india and look towards the southwest indian ocean of course we had that system that was very well supported that by the gfs but now look at it there's nothing there and instead throws up a brief spin-up cyclone in the Bay of Bengal, very low latitude towards Sri Lanka. We saw something very similar last week that completely failed to materialize, so I wouldn't put much stock onto that one at all just yet. That's why we haven't marked it. An Australian region then, of course, we're looking at Jasper's progression, and I gotta tell you, the GFS for the second run in a row now has fused together uh, Jasper and that next system in the Gulf of Carpentaria, and Jasper is what becomes it. Uh, becomes a substantial cyclone there, gets to hurricane force status, hugs quite close to the coastline, which means that Weeper might now see significant tropical storm force winds from this uh, within the five day period there as it reaches hurricane status. And now look at the rainfall expectations over the whole northern Queensland area there, and we are looking at really substantial amounts of rain even still now, south and around Cairns even, um, in those areas towards Innisfail particularly. We could be seeing very high amounts of rain there. Look at that, 16 inches, that's 400 millimeters further rain in the Innisfail region in the next five days, seven days actually. Further north along the coast as well, up to around 12 inches. The interior getting quite close to that as well, 300 millimeters. But look at that northwestern tip there along the Cape York Peninsula, getting up to around 21, maybe 22 inches, not far from Weipa. And that could result in over, what's that? It's 550 millimeters. That's obviously really substantial and present flooding danger there. Longer range, we see the continuation of this storm which does make landfall in Sri Lanka and by the way they are very rare and it continues, it survives through there and then uh, hooks northwards and makes landfall in Tamil Nadu in southeastern India. So there is a substantial storm, uh, Sri Lanka landfalls are very rare and when they do happen they can be very deadly and destructive so I would be concerned about that but the chances of that happening are still very low because of the GFS crying wolf in that area at the moment. 
Well, we watch the continuation of Jasper there. It strengthens as it hovers around the Gulf of Carpentaria and gets quite strong. Maybe category three there on the Sappho Simpson scale before pushing back through and back out over the Coral Sea and then heading quite decidedly then towards the east-southeast uh, in a pretty normal pattern. Although earlier model runs had a different scenario, it's worth mentioning, about this storm moving southwest towards the coastline of Australia as an extreme extremely powerful storm, maybe category five, but that has changed. Scan the barcode and that will take you to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all our usual products as well as our full season and individual storm animations and are still waiting for Hone t-shirts. My goodness me, they are our pride and joy right now because there's no sign of that dastardly Hone yet. Well, in the Silly Range, another system there in the Andaman Sea, just after Christmas, and moving through the Andaman Islands and into the Bay of Bengal proper, where it doesn't survive very long at all and dies off completely. So, little threat from that system, but something, little heads up, that could form, maybe even out of the energy of what that Pacific system ends up doing, moving through the Philippines. Probably are um, seeing an energy transfer all there from that one system to the other. And in the Australian region, following what would be Jasper's continuation once again, it's still going. Uh, thankfully misses all of those islands, I think, although it could affect one or two of those Australian outlying territories and then slams New Zealand, the North Island, around the 29th of December there. Look closely as we watch that system still holding on to hurricane equivalent strength for quite a while there until it passes Brisbane's uh, latitude and then weakens and then into... Uh, the southern part of the North Island of New Zealand, that would be the centre of the storm. Well, back on this day was something completely different of a beast, and it was Cyclone Yasa. I'm sure we all remember it. Uh, just three years ago, well, I say just, it feels like uh, re more recent than that, but there it is, Cyclone Yasa with its tremendous Category 5 peak before slamming into Fiji uh, near that intensity. We also had Tropical Storm at Zazu, which formed further east on this date as well, much to the east in the uh, Western Hemisphere there, uh, not far from Tonga. With Jasper, the main threat, the next name in the Atlantic naming list, if it happens this year, will be Vince. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Selma, and in the Central Pacific, it's still Hone. 80 storms so far this year around the world, the average is 92. In the Western Pacific, our next name is Jellawat, and in the North Indian Ocean, next up will be Rimal. A beautiful wintry background that we've got there for a little while now as we enter the late part of December. In the Australian region, the next name is Kiralee, the Southwest Indian Ocean, Alvaro, and in the South Pacific, our next name is Nat. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.